Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to take a detailed look at that thing I was so excited about working. Um, because, well, I think a few people understood what that video was about, but a lot of you have never seen this before, so let me show you. Just point the camera down. That is my Palette GTX 570 Sonic Edition. This thing was pretty crap. Uh, it had a four-phase VRM. Um, extremely questionable in terms, like I wouldn't trust it for for much more than stock voltage, and and so yeah, so basically because of that, I went and strapped this right here to it. So this this whole thing that is an EVGA E power. That's literally what it's called. Uh, EVGA used to sell these. There is a new version of these coming out sometime soon. Or at least there's leaks of a new version coming, but I'm not, not exactly sure. Well, not leaks. There's photos of the next version of this, but the, it's still not available. Anyway, EVGA used to sell these. Um, and basically, this is an EVGA 40, uh, classified VRM on, a, on its own PCB. So this is the kind of PCB uh, VRM you would see on like a classified GTX 680, classified GTX 780. Um, it, Basically, I think even the 980 Ti classified and the 980 classified use the same VRM. Essentially, it's a 14-phase VRM on a PCB with a, few, a bit of a you know control circuitry added on. And by control circuitry, I mean well, here you have a header for the EV bot from EVGA. That's a little tool they stopped selling uh, somewhere around the time the GTX 600 series got released because. Well, NVIDIA didn't like that EVGA had a little tool that let you control all the voltages on all the EVGA cards, so they had to stop, uh, stop selling that. Um, and you also get this little dip switch here, and that, that's what you can use voltage. That's what you can use uh, to control voltages on an e-power if you don't have an EV bot. Uh, there is also some. I think you can use a Raspberry Pi to plug into that header and, and control it that way. So yeah, um, and then the, all the rest of the PCB is pretty much just supporting circuitry for the for the actual VRM. So basically, you have th th that's the chokes. Then you have the heat sink that's on top of a 14 phase. Uh, you know, mo there's MOSFETs under there. It's a 14 phase VRM. International rectifier parts everywhere. So I think it's all it's direct FETs. I can't remember the exact part numbers off the top of my head right now, but yeah, there's. 14 phases made up of direct FETs. So that is a doubled up seven phase. That's not a true 14 phase because you can't actually buy a 14 phase voltage controller. The voltage controller right here, that's a chill. I can't remember what it is, so let's read it. That's a chill eight, give me a second, 8318. Uh, that's an eight phase voltage controller. So EVGA is choosing to just use seven phases out of it and, and double them up into that 14 phase VRM there. Uh, all of this is just, you know, capacitors. Um, then we have some chokes here for input filtering. So those take from the three six pins on the back. Uh, you know, the, the three six pins might look like a questionable option uh, choice for power input. These aren't six pins that are technically in spec. Like, you couldn't put these onto a GPU. These have three ground lines and three 12 volt lines. A proper six pin has a two, one sense line and two ground lines and three or two 12 volts. The, the t number of 12 volts uh, lines is sort of up to the manufacturer of the GPU and of the PSU. You don't need to have three of them. But what you do need to have is at least two grounds and one sense pin. These don't have that sense pin. That means these have the same number of grounds and 12 volt lines as an eight pin power connector which basically means this could totally do about 450 watts. Except that's also not true. This thing can easily deliver 1,000 watts of power because these connectors are actually, like the PCIe spec for the six pins and eight pins is way underrated. Uh, the official spec for these things is way, way higher. Um, so you can actually push, so basically the e-power doesn't even come with a, uh, any kind of power limiter. And from EVGA's own official documentation, it can deliver at least 500, it can deliver up to 500 amps at two volts. So this is one hell of a VRM on a PCB. It's really, really powerful. And it's just awesome that you can actually sort of buy it. That's the e-power. 
Now, the thing is, you need to actually hook this to a GPU somehow. And since you're going to be replacing the entire VRM, and that means, you know, uh, several hundreds of amps have to get from this edge right here to the GPU core right there, uh, you end up with this lovely mess of eight AWG wires and some really terrible soldering, which is my fault. The, the soldering is really, really bad on this card. Um, it's still, I think, the best I've ever done as far as like this size of wires goes, but yeah, it's still not great. Uh, the connection quality, just to give you some idea, right now, if I set 1.2 volts on the e-power, so if you measure off of this edge right there, it'll be 1.2 volts. By the time it gets to the actual GPU, it loses 100 millivolts. So 1.2 volts on the e-power is 1.1 volts on the GPU core. Uh, if I set 1.45 volts, the GPU core gets about 1.43-ish. So basically, this drops a lot of power because, well, the connection quality is crap. Oh, well, it's the first time I've done it, and it runs. At the very least, it runs. So, yeah, and also the e-power goes up to like 1.65 volts, even without the EV bot. So that's just using the dip switch. You can configure up to 1.65 volts, and even with all that voltage drop, I should be getting at least 1.45 volts under load with, say, LN2 cooling on the card. So I, I think it's good enough. Um, so yeah, that sort of covers the e-power. Um, you know, it basically just replaces the existing VRM of the card if, you, if the VRM on the card already is crap and, and might blow up at high power. So that's the e-power part of the card. As you can probably tell, the PCB is already covered in PlastiDip because, well, that's how I insulate for LN2 usage. Uh, unfortunately, because I soldered the e-power on first and then you know, insulated after. There's no Plasti Dip like un under the, like down in there. There's no Plasti Dip. So if that area gets wet, I, I'm seeing the card drop out very, very quickly. Um, unless I get that area to freeze over in ice or something. So yeah, I don't think this will run very long on LN2. Um, so that sort of covers the front of the card. On the back of the card, uh, there's a few more mods here. So obviously you can see the extra capacitors. Uh, these are all for the V-Core, uh, basically just to help out the E-Power with getting better qu power quality because obviously these terrible. So this all is actually ground. These lines right here, that's all ground lines. So all of my terrible soldering means that by the time the voltage actually gets to the GPU core, the quality is probably completely crap. So those capacitors are there to try help prevent that and get at least somewhat decent power quality to the GPU core. Um, which seems to be kind of working because the card seems to be clocking about the same as when I first put extra capacitors on it and didn't have the whole e-power thing running. Uh, so, you know, I'm, it's not like it's clocking worse. It's just the voltage is getting lost on my crappy soldering connections. Other mods I have, uh, well, the memory uh, got a, you know, extra capacitance on there as well. Uh, all the capacitors I'm using except for this one right here, that's a 2000 UF... Uh, Roth electronic or something like that. And all of the other ones are 1,500 microfarad Nichicon FP capacitors. So, and I do believe they're all two and a half thousand hours rated. So, the, the memory VRM also got a memory voltage mod. Um, slightly different, slightly new way of doing volt mods. Um, so, usually when you see a volt mod, you'll see that. Uh, this is awful. Anyway, so usually when doing volt mods, you'll only have two lines going to the potentiometer, um, since you'll have ground and the sense line from the voltage controller. As you can clearly see, this has a lot more lines coming onto it. This is just to measure memory voltage uh, when, when the card is running. So basically just stick a multimeter in that. Anyway, um, there's one line to the potentiometer so that the potentiometer can you know sense the, the voltage. There's one line for ground, and there's also one line for uh, memory voltage. And the reason for that is, is because if you have all three of these lines, I can actually tweak the voltage up and down. So it's not stuck, like if you normally do a volt mod and you use like a 10K ohm potentiometer, your voltage is stuck like 10%, like if you have a, well, yeah, let's say you have like 1K ohm resistance from your feedback pin to ground, and then you solder in your 10K potentiometer, then you have a permanent minimum voltage of like 10% above stock. Uh, and then you can go up from there. 
with this setup, I can go up and down. I can actually pull the memory voltage down to like 0.8 volts. Like, yeah, it won't even boot the card at that point. And I just reset the voltage on this, so this is going to be fun. The next time I have to start it up, I have to fine tune it again. Uh, unfortunately, this right now, as it is set up, is kind of screwed up because this resistor, which was supposed to be the safety, uh, I put it on the, the wrong thing, which I don't know why I did that. It just slipped my mind when I was working on the mod. So I have to resolder that. But other than that, it works just fine. Uh, I, I've already tried using it. I can tune voltage down. I can tune voltage up. Um, and the other cool thing about this is this is a 1K ohm potentiometer. And this is a 1K ohm, uh, 1K, 1.2K ohm resistance from feedback to ground voltage controller. So normally I would need like a 10K ohm for this mod on this voltage controller. And with this technique, well, I can just take a 1K ohm potentiometer and stick it on literally anything, which is the main reason why I did this, because I hate having to buy, you know, 10K ohm, 50K ohm, 100K ohm, 20K ohm, and having to keep track of all of them. It's much easier for me to just go buy 21K ohms and then add a few extra wire, add one extra wire. Works better overall for me. So... That's the memory voltage mod on there. That's sort of experimental. This is the first time I've done the voltage mod this way. Uh, what else is there? Oh, um, there's this. This line right here, which this is just another one of those sense lines. So you can stab a multimeter in there, and it basically measures voltage right from the back of a capacitor on the GP behind the GPU core. Um, so this gives you really, really accurate voltage measurements, and that's how I know the e-power is losing so much freaking power on the connections, because if you measure from the e-power, you won't actually see any issue. Uh, one last mod this card has, which is actually really, really hard to see. Let's see. I'll try show you. If you look, wait, I can't get the angle. There. All right, so you see that little dollop over there on the six pin. So that is there to basically uh, disable the, say, uh, the sense line of that 6-pin. So the way the sense for a 6-pin, basically how the card detects that you connected a 6-pin to the card is that it checks if the middle pin of the 6-pin connector, this middle, middle pin down here, right, this one, uh, is actually hooked up to ground. And if that pin is hooked to ground, you know, it knows that the 6-pin is present. So if you short that pin out to ground, which is what I did here, then it doesn't need the 6-pin to be plugged in to get the card to start. Uh, and then the other part of that mod is that right here, I combine the 12-volt planes for the two 6-pins. So each 6-pin has its own 12-volt plane. I can bind it here. And the reason I did that is because, as you can probably guess, getting, the s uh, getting this 6-pin into position, that's doable. Getting this 6-pin into position and pulling it back out, pretty much impossible. So I just decided to override that 6-pin. That 6-pin is no longer necessary, and the card will fire up if you just plug in that one, which works fine because the e-power is supplying all of the, like, doing all the heavy lifting in terms of power. So it doesn't matter that I'm missing one of the 6-pins because it's not going to overload them because the card doesn't actually... I don't, I don't even know if the card is using any 12-volt power right now. Uh, I suspect it might have some supporting circuitry somewhere that runs off of it, which is why I put that in there. And I'm also worried of tripping, uh, tripping any safeties. So just in case it does actually need a 6-pin, you know, 12-volt 6-pin power, that mod is there. But other than that, it doesn't need it. So. so, yeah, so basically, this is as, as pr prepared for LN2 as it's going to get. Now it's just a case of mounting the LN2 pot and preparing a motherboard to run it on because I want to run it on the X power, but the X power isn't insulated yet and, and a bunch of stuff. But yeah, this, this current really, currently this runs. Uh, you can, you know, tweak the memory voltage. You can tw tweak the core voltage. Uh, it doesn't have a power limit because this has a current. I think, I don't think this even has an overcurrent protection. I think last time I heard, it's like you need to exceed like 900 amps or something for this to actually try turn off. Um, and that's 900 amps like spike, uh, not continuous. Continuous, it's only rated to do 500 amps. It also gets really, really hot, which is why it has such a massive heat sink over the VRM. So you do need quite a bit of airflow to keep this running happily under full load. So yeah, that, that's, the, that's the GTX. 
570 um, done my way, I guess. And it, I'm, I'm not particularly proud of it because, as I said, it drops a ton of voltage. It's, it's not efficient whatsoever. But it runs and it, it, it starts and it finishes benchmarks right now. So now the only thing left is to put the LN2 on it and see if I can't get any actually respectable scores out of it. Which is going to be a hell of a lot, which is going to be really, really hard because JF110, so GTX 570, GTX 580, are extremely pow power hungry. And I'm kind of a noob at <laughs> LN2 on GPUs. So th this is going to be, well, when I do that, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be an adventure. And that will get live streamed. I have no idea when currently because I am kind of overwhelmed with life right now. Well, we'll just say life. Um, because stuff, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that covers it for this video. Um, hope you liked it, in which case there's a like button you can press. Uh, if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. If you are subscribed, there's a bell button you should press to get notifications about everything I do. Uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, I have a Patreon, so if you would like to, you know, support the doing of more crazy, stupid projects like like this right here, then you know you can you can use my Patreon and patronize me, and that'll help out with doing more of these projects because you know that they're not free. And one more thing I'm forgetting. Right, if you still don't get what this is about, there's a comment section down below. I'll try answer your question. Um, so yeah. That's that for this video, and see you guys next time. And now I gotta nail it with the. Which one stopped recording? That one.